Here we have the brand new Jean Paul Gaultier fragrance, Scandal Absolute. The notes are Mirabelle, Chestnut, and Sandalwood. So it's a pretty simple note breakdown. I'm gonna be giving you my pseudo first impressions in today's video, so make sure to stay tuned. Now, before I begin today's episode and I give you my thoughts on the brand new Jean Paul Gaultier Scandal Absolute in the all gold bottle, it's a really nice presentation. I do want to start the video off first by saying that if you love smelling your best, hit subscribe, hit the bell, and give this video a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm. It really means a lot to me. Once again, a very special thank you to my friend Chris from the channel Casual Fragrances. I'm going to drop a link to his channel down below. He actually gifted me a bunch of samples. He went through testing all of them and... Uh, he let me hang on to them so I can do these sort of um, pseudo first impressions on the channel, give you my thoughts on them, also let you know if I plan on purchasing any of these. There are two that I am 100% buying. The first one is Hugo Boss, the scent elixir. I already bought that on Amazon, should be coming in the mail today. Very excited about that one. And then there's also Invictus Parfum by Paco Rabanne, soapy lavender, fantastic fragrance. A bit on the casual side of things, not the strongest release from the brand, but nevertheless, I am going to be buying a bottle of it because I really enjoy the versatility and I don't think it's the most unique or original fragrance because it kind of reminds me of Chrome Legend by Azaro. Nevertheless, today we're talking about Jean Paul Gaultier Scandal Absolute. And like I said, of course, I tried this when my friend Chris came over several days ago and I've been playing around with it for a bit, tried it on skin, gave it a full wearing. So the samples weren't even like empty when he gave them to me, they were pretty much full. So I'm guessing he sampled them using only a few sprays. So it was kind of generous for him to gift me all of these samples. But Mirabelle, Chestnut, Sandalwood, I'm not in love with this one. I don't know what it is. My first impression is that this stuff is soft. It's very soft, it's very subtle. And with a name like Absolute, you think it's going to possess some strength and some virility, and you think it's going to convey a very strong you know, bold aura, but it doesn't do any of that. You know, Mirabelle is a fruity ingredient that smells a bit like plum, and I am getting that and I think it's nice, but it's something that I've smelled before and it actually leans a bit feminine. I was surprised by it. You know, there is this scandal for women, which has the legs of a woman sticking out of the bottle and it's upside down. And then there's scandal for men, which is more of like a boxing theme, kind of weird. And the bottle for this one is really nice. I really love the gold. It looks very elegant and opulent, but the scent, I don't care about it too much. I like the original Scandal, and I do like one of the other flankers. I actually purchased a couple of them. They're within eyesight, so I can I can see them off my left shoulder there. But this one, I'm not too crazy about. So I'm thinking, would I purchase this one? I'm gonna go with no. I think if I ever find it for a really good deal online, if I ever consider doing a full review in the future, perhaps I will. And I'm, I'm sincerely hoping that other people enjoy this one. The sandalwood is nice and smooth in this one. The chestnut is not like the, um, I know there's a Maison Margiela fragrance that has chestnut in it and it's gorgeous. Is it by the fireplace? I think it might be, but that one's gorgeous. This one, I mean, I don't get it too strongly, which is a bit of a bummer because it's one of these unique ingredients that could really like catapult this fragrance into like this mass welcoming by the community. And I just feel like this is so subtle and that fruity quality in the opening is a bit feminine leaning. And yeah, I'm not sure what they were really going for with this one. And I feel like the olfactive profile doesn't really align with the absolute title, especially with the gold aesthetic. I, I don't know, I suppose my my expectations for this were a bit different. Does it smell good? Yes, it does. But again, I think it's kind of weak in terms of that initial first, you know, that first impression, the wow factor just wasn't there for me. In a lot of other fragrances, the wow factor was there. But with this one, I feel like it lacks the wow factor. It's a bit feminine leaning. It's soft. And I don't think it's totally unique. It's something that I've smelled before in terms of the fruitiness. And anyway, like I said, I really hope that other people like it. You know, if you find yourself in a major department store, if it's available in your area, in your region, please try it. And I really hope, and you know, scent is subjective. So I think other people might take a liking to it, which I really, really hope is the case. But just based off this first impression here, it's not a love for me, but Thankfully, there are a lot more samples in that bag that I do enjoy. So I look forward to doing first impressions on those very soon, if not today, within the next few days. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for joining me. I hope you took something of value from today's episode. And of course, show your love to Chris over at the channel Casual Fragrances. I'm gonna drop a link to his channel down below in the description box. If you took anything of value from this video, hit subscribe, hit the bell, give this video a thumbs up. It would really mean a lot to me. 
Thanks again for watching. I love you all, and we'll see you tomorrow with a new episode. Bye.